So he went ahead and dug another one. Jesus help me stay. When he dug the other one, it was not contention again. He called the name Sigma. Hatred. Joseph, see you dreamt. Contention began. And then the father now decides to give him heritage, a coat of many colors. What would that bet? Hatred. The brother saw him from afar and said, There comes the dreamer. Let us kill him and see if the dream will happen. That's why the devil is after your faith, after your life, after the things that pertain to you because there's a dream hanging upon your life, a destiny, a purpose, a nation, a people that will become nothing except to fulfill what God gave you. A people that can suffer for an extra 30 years in Egypt until you find out that you were called as a deliverer to them. So they say, let's kill him. Hatred. How do you hate your own brother? That's how hatred resides in the body of Christ. How can this person say that the blessing of Abraham is hanging on only him? Did you hear what they told Isaac? He said, leave us. For you are greater than us. A whole nation, the king and his elders came and met a man with his family that has only two children and told the man with his servants, back out of our nation. Can you imagine that, Nigeria? That the government of Nigeria comes to meet a man and say, back out of Nigeria, you are greater than Nigeria. You don't know why the devil fights you. May God show you yourself in the spirit. You will find out that the devil knows that you are greater than all the arsenals from your village. All the weapons of war that they have gathered. He knows that one day you will step in and hey, the old past will break down. He knows already. He's afraid of that day. And he's saying, kill him. Kill him with fornication. Kill him. Kill him with unforgiveness. Kill him. Kill him with the love of God. Kill him. Kill him in an accident. Kill him. Don't let him arrive destination. To sustain the whole earth for food. His name is Joseph. The doubt of famine was in the whole earth. Egypt became the capital of food because one man, one man, he said, The Lord sent me that I may preserve you. How many of you like living at the mercy of somebody else? When a man inherits the well of the fathers, you will live at his mercy. Story of Archbishop Benzini Daosa. My friend, my friend, when we served in his new service, was from Benin. He said, When the Archbishop died, which is which is they did placard and brought out, and they were dancing on the street that the God of Christianity is dead because one man came with a level of authority till today. We don't have people that can talk like him. No, not in his day. I heard that a lady was raped in his church. Raped in his church. And on Sunday service, they came and told him he was in church. And said, ah, they raped you so lady in your church. He said in his church, he raised his hand and said, I release the spirit of death. Over that town, people started dying. Somebody will be walking, he will fall down and die. The, the king of the town sent to the upper of Benin and said, please go and beg Archbishop that people are dying. It's the way the upper of Benin said, tell the upper if he sends anybody else to come, the person too will die. Is that a man you want to touch his member? When do we hear it such a well be ready? You think the devil wants you to inherit it? Today he makes a post in our midst because we don't have authority. But the wealth of the fathers have been covered. Today we are looking for the wealth of Udaosa. We are looking for the wealth of Ayo Papalola. So that when a man can drink from that well, ah, it 
was out of another man's head. He went to a town and went to the center of the town to the tree of the witches. And he said they should call out the witches in town. He sat down by the tree and he told the witches, I'm giving you time to kill me. But if you are not able to kill me, I will kill you. He laid down by that place. I think they said he slept. He was not praying for defense. By the time he finished, he said, your turn and finish is my turn. He looked up to the heavens and prayed. The, the story clearly with a picture of fire, physical fire, came out of the heavens like Elijah and burned the tree which is gave their life to Jesus. And you want to open that way, the Philistines. And I wish the church was wise. I see that statement with pain. That if you can find those that will open the well that will be able to stand with them and say, I might not be the one when the well is open, but open it so that we will not be molested again. Hi, Ponte Kaila. Ah, I will wait until I hear it well. I heard the Ambonki speaking. He said he went somewhere and he, they, they didn't tell him and they just called him to preach. When he saw the thousands of if you are spiritual, you understand. He said when he mounted the altar, he said there are two vines. He opened only one. He said when he opened one, that's how people got born again. One. That means he had two back up. When he looked at the thousands of people, there was no need to open all that he had. He opened one. So when the man says he's showing up, you see ten. How do you preach and one million people give their life to Christ at once? Who will open his way? Who will be able to drink from it? You know why it's, we don't want to open the well? It's harder to open the well than to dig. Because when they cover the well, they pour stones inside. It means you will not be using hammer or anything. You, you, there are times you have to carry a stone and bring it out of the well. One of the folly of our generation is that the stones in the well is what we have given attention to, not the way. So, a, a, a hyperlist, a, a, an unbeliever, an atheist, a non entity in the kingdom, we come and tell you stories about an apostle, of Abana, and you believe it. You believe the stones about his life and refuse to believe the well that he had. So, because they have downgraded those men and abused them, when they call a man of God, they say, Who is he, self? Meanwhile, you can't get anywhere. Before I see ever dog his bed. He had to open his father's own face. Because it is in your father's well, you find out how deep a well is. You find out the dimensions of a well, how to dig a well, and how to sustain it. How he kept the well alive that nobody covered it till he died. That's a lesson for another day, when children cannot guard heritage, and the Philistines cover it up. So when they did it, they, come, they, they, they contended, they did it, there was hatred in the place. The Bible said he moved. I came to tell you, you must learn when to move. When you are in a place where you take a well and what you see is contention, where you take a well and what comes is hatred, be certain if God is saying you should stay there. If not, it's a sign like Isaac. Find where to dig your well. Meanwhile, no matter how many wells you inherit, the well you'll be remembered for is the well you dug. Because if the only well you have is the well you inherited, people will look at you and all they will remember is Catherine Coleman. They will never know you existed because you left upon the livery, you lived upon the leverage of another man. Every man must dig his own well. The reason why you have the well of it outside is because he dug it. The reason why you have the well of Catherine Coleman is because she dug it. Which one will you dig? Which one will you be remembered for when you go? In case you leave the air today, will somebody come and say, I want the anointing of. There's a rise of evangelists because Graham Bonke left and he released his mantle. Ah, that's a father. I like that type. His, his, his well was not lost. Before he left, he knew the person to take care of his well. He brought the person out and made the world to know that he released the well to the person. I was watching Daniel Colender some days back. He went to preach somewhere like his father in the Lord, Real Monk. And when he went to preach, a, a, a deaf man that didn't know about the program just felt like strolling to a, a deaf man, not that he was hearing the sound. 
a deaf man, a Muslim deaf man, when he was, he felt like strolling to the square that day, not knowing the program was holding because he couldn't hear the sound. When he got there, there was a program. And for the first time, his ears opened and he heard Jesus is Lord. He came and he was shouting. And as he stood there, he called the name of his village. I said, somebody go and tell my wife I can hear. And tell her I said, Jesus is Lord. I'm coming. Because the well was not lost. So another man is using it. Do you see how our nation looks like? Do you know how many mighty men have lived in this nation? But who did they handle that to? 